everyone and welcome back to the start of another weekly vlog. I took you guys with me today to get a little peek at what we are working on next, which is adding some additions to the YouTube studio. So I'm really excited to do this. We stopped at Target first to grab another bookshelf and then we ran into Best Buy so we could look at some more lighting options to kind of up the game a little bit for the YouTube studio, which I'm so excited for. So we are going to, during this weekly vlog, be picking out a book to read together, which we are still, that's TBD, TBD on that, because I have to really pick one from my April TBR, and we will go from there. But also included is this journey on revamping the YouTube studio, which I'm so excited to do and take you guys along with me. And I'm going to give you a little peek at what we're working with now. So as you've seen in like my talking head videos, this is the setup that I currently have. So I've got my nice tall bookshelf, which I absolutely love, and my big comfy chair, and then my little ottoman with my coffee tray and my adorable mushroom light. Also love my string lights behind it because I'm kind of cheesy, but I just really love these lights. However, the lighting situation has not been ideal. So we are going to, like I said, we're going to take it up a notch. We're going to take it up another level for the lighting situation and then also the layout a little bit. So from Target today, we grabbed another bookshelf that matches this, except it's the short one. That is going to replace this ottoman. And then I'm going to be able to <laughs> take care of like all the other random book situations lying around the house and get everything reorganized on bookshelves. I'm so excited for the new lighting for the backdrop of the YouTube videos. And then also we are going to mess around with the lighting for my actual like overhead light and go from there. So I'm super excited to take you guys along this journey with me. My husband is currently finishing up some errands right now, and then he is going to help me start getting this bookshelf together, and then we are going to work on getting the lighting set up, hopefully some point this weekend. So I'll give you a sneak peek at that, but I wanted you to have a little just refresher of what it looks like first before any of the changes are made. So it's not too many changes, just adding that extra bookshelf, and then I'll be able to kind of reorganize and decorate some stuff around it and then also the lighting for the back wall. I can't wait to see what it looks like. I'm so excited. So with that being said, welcome back to another weekly vlog. We will also be picking out a book to read as well for this week. I have some good ideas in mind, per usual. So we will do either one or two books because I do kind of like to do two in a vlog. I don't know. It just works well with a vlog. So we'll see about that. I will check back in with you guys when we have a book update and a book pick for this vlog and also give you guys a little sneak peek about what we're doing as far as revamping this studio. So thank you so much for joining me on this trip for this week. I will check in with you guys as soon as I have another update. All right, bye. Hi friends, so quick two second update. We had quite an adventure this weekend when it came to revamping the YouTube studio setup and my lighting journey that I've been going on. So we grabbed these really cool bar lights from Best Buy on Saturday and they weren't giving me the effect that I wanted them to give me. They weren't luminous enough, so I wanted something that was going to kind of light the entire space or the entire wall, the backdrop behind me when I'm sitting and doing my talking head videos. And they weren't really giving me like, like the oomph that I really needed them to. So I hopped on Amazon, like I always do, grabbed two other lights that looked bigger. And I thought that they were gonna be a little more ample in the lighting area, like as in more wattage of the lights, I guess, if that's what you wanna say. Like they were going to exude more light across the space. Got those yesterday because Amazon one day, hello, this is the world that we live in now. And those also didn't give me what I wanted. So now I've got like two sets of lights. Neither one of them are doing what I wanted them to do. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me. I was like, why is this not the vibe that I'm going for? 
and I realized it's because I had a very specific thing in mind. And so I went back to Best Buy this morning, took the first set of lights back, and I grabbed the like hexagon nano leaf lights. I'm like, that's what I that this is what I'm wanting. So I want the wall behind me to be lit up and just two lamps on the wall were not giving me the effect I wanted. I'm like, I want light on the wall. I want the wall to be lights. Duh. I don't know why it took me so long to figure out that this is exactly what I was hoping for. And I've seen a few girls use these. I mean, not just girls, but like specifically girls that I follow on BookTube or on Bookstagram. And I love the way that they look so much. They are such a good vibe. I just want this to be like a beautiful setting of lighting in my studio and I want it to be cozy but also kind of edgy and vibey and I think this is exactly what is going to do that for me so I'm super excited especially because like in my head I'm being a total lunatic. I must not actually be able to get what is in my head on my canvas but I think this is going to work. So that's what I'm going to be doing this week. And I hope I can get this set up before my next recording, which will be probably Wednesday or Thursday. So these will maybe make an appearance in my next talking head video. So I'm super, super excited for that. Um, also quick update on where I'm at reading wise. So I started Crimson Moth last night. I only was able to read about 10 pages before my eyes just completely closed on me and I had to go to sleep. So I sat down and read a little bit more this morning. I do really like it so far. It is a YA book and I will go into more about what that book is about when we sit down this afternoon to do a check-in. I am just going to say this though, just really quickly. And I'm only going to say it once, but I need to get it off my chest. One of the main characters, his name is Gideon. And another character in the book, her name is Haro. I've not even read Gideon the Ninth, but I know the books. I know the series because it's on my TBR and I actually really want to read it soon within this year. Two of the characters are named Gideon and Haro. Does nobody think that's weird? Is it just me? Again, this is the only time I'm going to mention it, but I am going to mention it because I immediately, like it caught my attention. So I don't know. I just, that was odd to me. But yeah, that's where we're at. So I started it this, no, I started it last night read a little bit more this morning. I do really like it, but I'm going to give you a better check-in on that this afternoon after gym and work and life and try to work a little bit on the studio in between all of that as well. So I just wanted to give you an update on where the studio setup is at. Kind of took a screeching halt over the weekend and then now we are here. So hopefully this will solve all of my problems and I'm not quite a lunatic for thinking exactly what I want in my setup. But we shall see how that goes. Anyways, just wanted to let you guys know where I'm at on that. We will do another book check-in later for the vlog. Otherwise, I hope you have a fabulous day and I will talk to you later. All right, bye. Hey, uh, welcome to another episode of Lori Eats the Same Damn Thing every single day. If you have not, up until this point, tried cottage cheese toast, again, only if you're a cottage cheese fan, clearly. I should have put a trigger warning that there was cottage cheese in this footage. But if you layer some cottage cheese on your toast and put your favorite toppings on it, I prefer like a fried egg on one and then I do like a little tomato and balsamic on the other. Oh, you are truly missing out. Truly. I'll show you the finished product in a minute. Well, there you have it, my friends. Final product. This is my cottage cheese toast that I eat every day. Highly recommend if you have not tried it yet. Again, trigger warning, cottage cheese. Sorry about that. Well, good morning, friends. I wanted to do a quick reading check-in, actually an official reading check-in because we have not done that yet in this vlog. I primarily had you downstairs in my YouTube studio showing you the revamp that we are doing, and I do have some exciting progress to share on that, but I will do that later. First and foremost, we are going to do a first reading check-in for this vlog and for the book that we are reading for this vlog, which is... The Crimson Moth by Kristen Siccarelli. And just a quick recap about what this book is. We follow our main character whose name is Rune and she is a young witch. And in the world that she lives in, it is now illegal to be a witch. 
At one point in time, witches were actually part of the ruling society of this world, where there were three sisters that were the queens of the world that they lived in. And then a sort of revolution happened where people revolted against the witches and took down these queens. And since then, it has become illegal to be a witch illegal to the point where there is a guard in this world that actually hunts down witches and will purge them if they can prove that someone is a witch. To determine whether or not someone is a witch, they will capture these women or take them hostage and strip them completely nude and search their bodies from head to toe to determine if they have any scarring on their bodies. It turns out in this world to perform magic or spells with magic, the witches actually need to use blood in order to do so. So they will very strategically cut themselves to use their own blood and perform magic. Hence why they will then be searched for any scarring on their body to determine whether or not they are witches or not. Quick side note, I think that is very interesting, very unique to this book, which I do like so far. A lot of stories I've read about witches, it's something that comes very naturally to them. So a young woman starts to notice that she can do things or make things happen. And in this world, it is very much a strategic effort. Like you have to very strategically be able to perform spells by using a certain set of circumstances. So I really like that about the story. I think that's kind of interesting and unique. So our main character, Rune, does not know that she is a witch until she reaches her 16th birthday, and she discovers she is a witch by having a menstrual cycle that ends up bleeding black as opposed to just a normal menstrual cycle. Another very cool aspect of this book, and I'm just going to come out and say it right now, I love that it is talked about so, so much. So because being a witch in this world is illegal and they determine whether or not you're a witch by looking for scars on your body, our main character Rune saves her menstrual blood every month so that she can perform spells and magic without leaving any trace or scarring behind on her own body. So there is so much talk about being a woman in this book, being a woman that bleeds in this book, and then using that as an advantage in this book. And I am here for that vibe. Like bring forward the talk about how this woman's body basically sets her apart from other people and in a very, very cool way. Because it is illegal though to be a witch in this world, Rune still hides the fact that she is a witch and she has now made it her life's goal to help save other witches that are being purged. The book opens kind of tragically on a lot of loss for not just her but some of our other main characters as well, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but her grandmother was a witch and when all of this became illegal, she was basically forced, her hand was forced into giving up her grandmother and reporting her grandmother as being a witch. Otherwise she would have also been arrested and put to death as well. Her grandmother was like, I have lived a very long good life. It would absolutely destroy me to know that you went to your death as such a young girl. If you do not turn me in, I will turn myself in. So do this, save yourself. So we open the book on Rune already carrying this immense sense of guilt because she purged her grandmother. She basically gave her grandmother up to be purged and she has always felt so incredibly horrible about it and it was like two months later that she finally had her first menstrual cycle and discovered that she was a witch herself and that she had even this greater sense of remorse for doing this and because of this situation she has now made it her life's effort to save as many witches as she can on the down low so she has become this alter egoed person who they like the newspapers and the media of this time have named the critics in Moth. In Rune's life, there are only two other people, two very close friends of hers that know what she actually is. Otherwise, no one else around knows that she's a witch and she has kept it this way by not leaving any scarring 
on her body and also hiding the fact that she is saving witches of course in general but also promoting the fact that she thinks that purging witches is beneficial for the good of the people in this world so she is kind of playing this like secret identity person in a couple of different ways she's pretending she's one thing during the day and then she is at this crimson moth by night and being like this vigilante to help save other witches in this world she is also trying to find a very specific witch who was a good friend to her grandmothers and this is going to kind of help ease that remorse and the guilt that she carries over her grandmother and she discovers that this woman has already been captured and will most likely be put to death so now she is kind of like weaseling her way in and getting cozy with the captain of the guard to try to figure out where this woman is being held and how she can kind of break her free and save her life as well this captain of the guard his name is Gideon and he is trying to determine whether or not Rune is the Crimson Moth. He has kind of started to put some puzzle pieces together. He's very smart, very cunning. He thinks he's already seen some things in Rune that don't add up and now he's trying to cozy up with her to determine whether or not she is the Crimson Moth because he has a feeling that she is. So we have this really interesting dynamic with these two main characters. She's kind of like pretending to be this person and cozy up to him to get some intel on where this witch is being held. And he is trying to cozy up to her and determine whether or not she is who she truly says that she is. So I like this dynamic of they both have ulterior motives. They're already enemies because they are coming from two different places in this world and now they are coming together because they want to learn about the secrets that the other one is holding. So I kind of like that dynamic. It's not just an enemies to lovers, it's an enemies to lovers but like enemies pretending to be lovers and then I would imagine over the course of the book becoming actual lovers. If I had to guess, I would say that that is where the story is going to go. There is also a different dynamic too because the other person that Rune trusts with her life is named Alex and he is the brother to the captain of the guard. So now she's playing a couple of different fences here, right? She's got this captain of the guard who she's trying to cozy up to and pretend that she's interested in to get this information. Alex, his brother, knows that she's a witch and knows that she's trying to do this with his brother and he's trying to like stop this situation from happening in general and he already has feelings for Rune. It's very, very interesting so far. I really like it and I'm super excited to see where this goes. I am only right now 130 pages in. It's about a 400 page book. I'm hoping that we can finish this entire book together throughout the vlog. I am going to try to sit down and read this afternoon. So far, definitely really like it. I can tell that it is a little bit more of a YA novel. It's reading that way a little bit. Um, but again, it's just early stages of the book. So I'm hoping as the characters develop and their relationships develop as well, I can kind of see how I feel a little bit more about the writing style as the story continues. So this afternoon, after everything is wrapped up with work and all the other things that I have going on, I am going to sit down, try to chip away at some more of this, and I will give you guys some more thoughts and opinions after we get there. Until then, I hope you guys are having a fabulous day and I will check in with you later. All right, bye. We have a true vibe happening for this evening's reading session, and I'm into it. I'm here for the rainy day vibes. So just a real quick note, and this is something that this author has done in this story, which I really like, is there are different houses or manners 
that are named after the people that owned them. So the house that Rune lives in was her grandmother's. Their last name is Winters, and her house is called Winter Sea. And she is going to the grounds of Oak Haven right now, which was owned by Seraphine Oaks. That's the witch that she is trying to save that was really good friends with her grandmother. Um, but it's really cool. I think it's like a cute little detail. So Seraphine Oaks is from Oak Haven. And Rune Winters owns Winter Sea House. I don't know. I just think it's really cute. I like that. I like that little detail. I picked up on it. I wanted to do a quick check-in with you guys because I have been able to make quite a bit of headway on my book. Um, and I'm actually doing some stuff right now because exciting news my husband and I are going on vacation this weekend we are going to this a fun little west side city called Traverse City in Michigan um if you know you know or if you don't know it is the west side on Lake Michigan and it's just absolutely beautiful we try to go a couple times a year if we can so I haven't sat down and read too much this afternoon I did get to read this morning but I wanted to give you a check-in on where I'm at with that so let's do a little reading check-in together Let's, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna prop you up. We're gonna just sit down and do a reading check. Hi, Bobby. You come here and say hi. Okay, fine. So, where I'm at on the Crimson Moth, I am currently on page 315. So, like I said, I was able to kind of read this morning and chip away a little bit. And I'm hoping after I get some of my stuff done this afternoon, I can sit down and read a little bit more. So I have just under 100 pages left of the book. I think it's about 400 pages long. Yeah, it's like 400 pages long. And I just, you know, I have some thoughts on it. I, I really like the idea of this story. I think it is very interesting, of course, the the dynamic of a world where witches are not technically allowed to live anymore, and we have the people that hunt them to make sure that this happens, and the enemies to lovers romance that is trying to build in this book based on those two characters. So our main character, Rune, who is the young witch, and then our other main character, Gideon, who is the captain of the guard that hunts for all of these witches and basically imprisons them. And then they do this major purging of witches. So actually getting rid of them, like killing them. They are not allowed to walk this earth anymore. As I said in my last check-in, there's kind of like this bounce between them where they are both pretending to be something they are not to try to get information from the other. So now they're in this like courting situation where it seems like to the outside world, they are just kind of courting each other, trying to get to know each other, but they each have ulterior motives in doing so. Rune is trying to see if she can figure out where they are keeping these witches because she's still trying to save her grandmother's super good friend from back in the day named Seraphine. And Gideon is trying to determine whether or not Rune is the Crimson Moth, so this vigilante witch who has been saving countless witches throughout this world. And if she's not the Crimson Moth, if she has anything to do with it or is just a witch herself in general. With that dynamic, I thought I was going to like super, super love it because I'm like, this is, this is enemies to lovers. You can't be any more enemies to lovers than like the witch and then the witch hunter. The two things that cannot be compatible together. But it's almost making the whole story just feel so fake and so false. And I don't know if that's what the major problem is, like I feel like I can't connect to any of the characters in the book. I like them, I like what they stand for. So Rune is obviously trying to carry out this vigilante act and save as many witches as she can because she feels so guilty about having to send her grandmother to be purged. And Gideon is just a, he's the captain of the guard. He does things for the people of this community, the people of this world, for his brother. He's a protector. That's what he does. So they are both good people. They're not bad in the sense of like they don't try to cause harm to others that wouldn't be for the greater good, but they are also just like always faking who they are. And I feel like that is making it really hard for me to connect with them. I don't know. That's just me. Again, like I said, I really like the premise of this story. I think it's a really cool idea. 
And there's obviously like that super tense and high stakes dynamic of a world where witches aren't allowed and our main character is clearly a witch and she's just hiding who she is. But I, I think that's my major issue is I almost as a reader don't feel like I truly know who she is. Um, besides obviously her carrying this guilt and thinking that this world that they live in where witches are not allowed to live is totally unreasonable and not an ideal situation. Hey. She even says things herself throughout the book. Like she doesn't always know because she's wearing this mask all the time what she really wants anymore. Like she used to be a girl before all of this happened. Like she just liked to go to parties and balls and have tea with her friends. But now she's got so much weight on her shoulders. She's put on her own shoulders because she's trying to help and save all these people. But she doesn't even really know who she truly is anymore. Gideon is very true to himself. I will say that much. Him fibbing to kind of get closer to Rune is a little bit different, in my opinion, than Rune in general. Um, but still, he he just seems kind of contradictive. And I know this whole scenario is put in place, like, to be the enemies to lovers. Like, oh, I'm going to pretend to like this girl so I can try to get some information from her. And then, of course, he's starting to develop feelings or he seems himself becoming kind of protective over her in certain situations when some stuff goes down. So it's, it's just all very... It's almost like too contradicting for me to really fall into a flow. Again, I'm not trying to like give like too many negatives on the book. I really do enjoy the premise of this story. And of course, I'm excited to see where it goes and how it ends. Because as I said in the last check-in too, there is this dynamic on top of these two main characters where Gideon's brother, Alex, has been best friends with Rune like their whole lives. And Alex knows what Rune is. Gideon, remember, still at this point, does not know that Rune is actually a witch. He has had his suspicions about her, but he's never been able to prove it. Alex actually knows what she is. Alex knows what his brother does. So he kind of is like this big middle part in between them that knows both sides of the story. And he tries to stay neutral and tries to be Switzerland. But of course, because he's known Rune for so long and has been friends with her for so long and close to her for so long that he has developed feelings for her and he wants nothing more than to leave this whole situation behind and for her to come with him. And it kind of almost makes me wonder if maybe there's something going down. Maybe Alex is up to something more than I'm giving him credit for, if you catch my drift. But even on top of that, it's just like this extra dynamic where Rune is like, oh, like I need to stay here and like save all the people and do all the things. But Alex wants me to come in love with him and it could be nice to live in a different world with him. And do I really have feelings for him? Do I love him? But also Gideon is like super attractive and super sweet and like different than I thought he was. And I, it's like almost like it's almost confusing me as the reader. So interesting dynamics in this book. Am I going to finish it? Of course. I have less than 100 pages left. I am in it to win it at this point. And it is pretty easy to read. I will say that the writing style flows very smoothly. I just wish I felt a little bit more connected to the characters. I think because the dynamic is with each of them, like each one is not just like kind of cut and dry. It has made me not really pinpoint on one person in this story and like kind of and like, yeah, that's my girl or that's my guy. I'm like rooting for them. So there's that. I am really excited to see where it goes and how it ends. Until then, I'm just going to keep shipping away. Hopefully this afternoon when I get all my stuff done. So I am going to get back to starting my packing situation and getting ready for the gym coaching tomorrow morning. And then after that, I am going to start making dinner. Then we are going to sit down and try to get more of this book done because I do want to see what happens with these characters and this big bounce back and forth between them and everything that's happening. So until then, I hope you have had a fabulous day and I will check in with you guys later. All right. Bye. Hi, me again. Um, also, sorry, my grill is going per usual in the background for dinner. Um, but I wanted to do another little blurb because I didn't mention when I checked in earlier that I'm at about like the the third act scene happening so there is definitely some stuff going down some betrayals some things being like pulled out of the woodwork and discovering about some of our characters and some truths 
about some situations that we didn't know about. And also Gideon and Rune have, as I said, have been courting this whole time, so they have spent decent amount of time together, which is why their feelings are kind of starting to change towards each other, which I don't think I really relayed too clearly earlier, but just wanted to say that. Just wanted to do this quick little blurb, let you know um, some stuff is happening. That's where we're at in the book. Things are going down. So, okay, bye. And the girl that you are always hearing in the background, chicken sausage for dinner. Oh yeah, some spaghetti squash, air fried potatoes, bon appetit. Well, hello friends. How are we doing on this fine afternoon? We are still getting some wild spring weather here in Michigan. We had hail about 15 minutes ago and I, I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> so that's still a thing. Um, actually, I don't know. I've said this a billion times before, but you will hear me talk about the weather in Michigan nonstop year round. So it's not just winter and spring. It's year round. Literally, I will complain about it in some shape or form, but I wanted to do a quick and final check-in with you guys for this vlog and give you a heads up on like where I'm at and what has happened in the last day or two since we have last checked in with each other. So I'm super excited because we are still making headway on the YouTube studio. We got a new setup for the lighting that I have in the studio. I have this beautiful, beautiful light that my husband got for me, but we were having some issues with the lighting setup in general. So this is going to help with that. So that is one thing that we are trying to complete is changing out the setup on the light. Another thing we are going to do over time and we didn't do this week is some sort of window treatment to either filter the light or block the light out. Right now, because the weather is so volatile, we are constantly going from gray and overcast to sunny out of nowhere, and it causes quite an issue with the lighting situation and the whole setup when you are recording. If you do booktube yourself or any type of record video recording, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It has been... Very interesting to say the least, but I do want to show off one of our biggest improvements for the studio, which is behind me, and it did make an appearance in my latest video, which I am currently exporting as we speak, but I'm just going to do this while we're on the camera together. Look, it's so cool. Oh my God. So I got these nano leaf panels. I think I told you guys my story about the lighting setup that I was trying to do behind my head and kind of like between the bookshelves and the chair. And it just wasn't enough. The space is quite open. So I wasn't getting the lighting that I actually wanted. And I was like, how can I get the wall to just be really cool colors and add like a really warm vibe? Oh my gosh actual lighting panels on the wall. So that's what struck me into getting the Nano Leaf. I love them so much. If you've not seen these before in person, they are really, really cool. So you can kind of create your own design and your own setup. And they are also touch activated. It's kind of hard to see on camera. They're touch activated. You can change the color by using an app on your phone. You can choose like very specific colors that you like yourself. Like I kind of like this pink purple vibe. They have um, different scenes that you can choose. So they are like animated. These are like standard on the app. I am obsessed. I love it so, so much. So we have added this to the studio and then also the new bookshelf that you guys got to see as well, which I haven't organized yet. We still have books upstairs that I'm going to have to get to and then add those down here as well and then reorganize the large bookshelf and go from there. But... With all that being said, I wanted to do our last and final check-in together for the vlog and for the book that we completed together in this vlog, which was The Crimson Moth by Kristen Siccarelli. And at the last check-in, when I was talking to you guys about 
where I was at and what I was feeling. I had some mixed, mixed thoughts on the character development, more or less, not the character development, I guess, but like the, the relationship development. So because this story was enemies to lovers, or even I guess like rivals to lovers, because we have a witch and a witch hunter, it didn't seem very fluid in them building a relationship together. And because they were both trying to play the other one kind of dirty the whole time, like she was pretending to be into him, he was pretending to be into her, and then they would kind of like separate and have like these own inner thoughts and feelings about the other person and kind of question what they were doing and question what they were thinking and feeling. It just felt very push and pull and back and forth. And I never really felt like a seamless transition into them really feeling the way that they felt about each other and the way that they felt about each other being legitimate, if that makes sense. Like it just felt kind of fake still. It was very hard as the reader to bounce back and forth between them having those thoughts and feelings for each other. And I don't know, it just didn't, it didn't flow how I would normally enjoy an enemies to lovers story. I will say this book ended much differently than I expected it to. And also it was somewhat of a cliffhanger at the end. So it was very much set up for book two. And uh, am I going to continue this series? I honestly don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to wait and see when book two comes out and read the synopsis of book two. I didn't hate this book. It just wasn't really my favorite. I already finished it this morning and I went on Goodreads and Storygraph, gave it about a three and a half, which is not bad, right? That's, that's not like a bad rating, but it's not the best. So I didn't hate it, didn't absolutely love it. I guess I was a little disappointed because I was super excited to read like a witchy book, especially because that's usually my vibe. And the witch part of the story was very interesting. I liked that the witches had to use blood to perform any type of magic. I liked how there was different types of magic and the book kind of broke those down. So there was like different levels. Some are very easy, some are more complex and require more blood. And again, because our main character is hiding the fact that she's a witch and she doesn't want to have to cut herself and leave scars on her body to get blood, she has been using her menstrual blood and even the menstrual blood of her close friend the entire book. And I don't know, I thought that was really unique and interesting. And I liked how that was just kind of talked about. Like the whole time she's like waiting for her period to come so she could do magic. And I was like, yeah, you are, girl, because you're a woman and you are going to use your body to help you get through the situation. So I did really appreciate that aspect of the story and the witch side of it in general, like I said. The romance part, I don't know, just kind of lacked for me and I really wanted it to be more than it was. And I said I was only gonna mention this once, which was in the very, very first check-in for this video, but I'm gonna have to say it again. Gideon and Harrow? How is that a thing? Like how are two characters in this book named Gideon and Harrow. Like, someone explain that to me. I'll wait. Anyways, it's fine. It is what it is. It was a good story. I liked it. Again, I liked the magic and the witch part of it. Romance, I just wanted a little bit more out of it, but it wasn't the worst thing I've ever read. So with that being said, we are going to end this vlog here. We have read one entire book together. We've started the YouTube Studio Transformation. We made great headway there. So as we continue to add things, I am going to continue to show you guys in the vlogs as we do them. And can we talk about the nano leaves? Like how cool are those? Don't they add something, don't you think? I love it. So anyways, thank you so much for joining me on this journey and getting all of this set up and reading this book together. As always, if you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up because it always helps a girl out. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my other upcoming videos, like my TBR video that is coming out this week, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. And have you read this book yet? Is it on your TBR? Do you think you're going to read it? Does it sound interesting to you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this book in the comments below. As always, it has been an absolute blast and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one.